And just like that, good morning, everybody, and welcome to a very early edition of this Bravado with Bobby Munson, the very first edition of this very show where I am going to do all things review-wise, whether it be movies, whether it be television, whether it be music, you're going to get it all right here on the Bravado, and I want to say big good morning to my Brunch Buster brother, Chris Parrish, joining me in the chat. Thank you for joining me this morning, Mr. Chris Parrish. I hear you had an awesome time last night at the uh, LPW show there, teaming with Bobby Sharp. And we're also being joined right now by Turnbuckle Studios. Carl, my man, good morning to you. First ever. Holy crap, you got it. I didn't announce it. I just thought I'd do it. I got some time here this morning. And at Bastard 69 thank you for joining me as well, too, Ryan, my man. Good to see you in the chat this early in the morning. Hopefully everybody's bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready for a wonderful Saturday. It's going to be a good time here. And I got uh, two big reviews coming your way right now here today. I got a movie review, and it's going to be followed by a music review after that. So, yes, stay tuned for that as well, too. But we're going to start off first and foremost, uh, first and foremost with the movie review I just saw from last night. Went to go check out a movie with my wife in theaters called don't worry, darling. You see it right there on your screens. This movie starring Florence Pugh, who you might know from the movies Midsommar and Little Women. It also featured Harry Styles, a uh, mu uh, musical singer, here, uh, Harry Styles, and also Chris Pine, who you know from the uh, recent Star Trek franchise, uh, the rebooted Star Trek franchise. Uh, so this movie uh, definitely got a lot of uh, negative reviews for it, uh, especially from the critics uh, going into uh, Rotten Tomatoes. You start to look into it, 38% that this one is running. So going into this thing, I mean, you kind of get a little bit of a, a wonder if this is going to be a terrible movie because it features such great, wonderful people. So it's uh, really, really odd to see it. Uh, yes, and uh, Parrish mentioning she was also a, uh, also Paige in Fighting With My Family. Very much so, yes, and she did an, a, a marvelous job. And that's the one thing I'm going to say right off the hop with this movie. Uh, despite what you're hearing critically about this film, the performances within the movie are absolutely top-notch. These are fantastic actors and actresses that deliver a top-notch level performance in this very movie. Now, there's a lot of things that can be said. Uh, this one, it's a movie based in the 1950s. It's a utopian experimental community. Uh, it kind of very reminiscent looking of the Stepford Wives. If anyone's ever seen any version of the Stepford Wives, it's kind of the, the feel that you begin to get from this movie. But then it starts to get a little bit strange. Very, very strange. And the main character, uh, portrayed by uh, Florence Pugh, her character, Alice, begins to start to see a lot of weird things. She's having dreams, nightmares, almost like a psychological breakdown of sorts. Uh, everyone starts to make her believe that she could be crazy uh, throughout this entire thing. And I'm not going to give too much away here. Uh, I'm going to start saying about the pros and the cons of this particular film because I want to have this remain spoil spoiler free for all of you who have not had the opportunity to go and see it. Uh, but as things begin to break down, the movie then gets into its final act. It starts taking a little bit of a twist that uh, everybody kind of is debating whether or not the ending is really for them or who it might have been for. And that's where the cons come in. So I'm going to start with the cons. This movie... I found personally very predictable because I could see what movies it kind of paid homage to. I mentioned the Stepford Wives. That's not a dead giveaway with Stepford Wives, but there is at least one other movie at a recent television show that if I were to give those away, it would probably definitely give away the ending to this particular picture. Uh, and then after that, the last bit of this movie is absolutely just a mess. It is god awful when it gets to the final act at least the last 15 to 20 minutes when they really start to reveal things and then where it goes from there it becomes very muddled very questionable leaves a lot of plot holes in it 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 almost like they had an idea that they wanted to go with and then they wanted to try to try to make it a little different towards the ending and they didn't quite know where to go and the execution falls a little bit short which is a shame uh this one directed by olivia wilde who does a fantastic job on the direction of this particular picture and also she is in the movie herself too and the acting like i said there is one of the best pros of this entire thing uh the acting is top notch as i mentioned uh the first half of the movie is good. It's solid. Despite being predictable, the way it's structured and put together, along with the acting, is worth its weight in gold right there. Uh, 
Harry Styles. I got to mention Harry Styles for a minute too, because Harry Styles, uh, music singer, has made some you know small appearances in films and stuff like that. In this one, he really gets an opportunity to shine, really show his acting chops, and does a phenomenal job of it. I really thought that Harry Styles killed it in this film and really made me believer in his uh, performance. So excellent work by Harry Styles. Uh, as always, excellent work from Florence Pugh. And Chris Pine, again, too, he plays a great role within this movie. Uh, so everybody involved, excellent, excellent work. The first half of the movie, awesome. So again, there is some very good positives that maybe not all the critics are giving you the full details of. So there are some takeaways that you can go and enjoy about the movie, but there is some things that are going to drag it down. Like I said, that last half is bad. And there's one scene in particular in the last half of the movie that's just, it, it's almost cringy and laughable and ruins all the other good things about the movie when it does things like this. Um, and again, a lot of this has been done in other films and television, stuff like that. And it's not breaking new grounds by any means. But again, not the 38% terrible that you're reading in the critic reviews on Rotten Tomato and such. If you want to save yourself the money from going to the theater, I would say wait until this one becomes free on streaming or an opportunity to see it sometime when you're with, uh, you know, on a date night or something along those lines. Go check it out eventually. You don't have to pay big money for it. Wait till it comes on streaming. Streaming, sorry. Uh, I'm going to give this one a, a, a six out of ten because it's it's above average, but it's still not a solid picture that I'm going to say everybody needs to rush out and go check out. But that is it. Don't worry, darling. In theaters now. Check it out uh, when you have that opportunity. I am giving it a partial recommendation uh, with with caution, of course. Uh, it's definitely not one that you want to watch uh, under any any uh, substances because there's definitely some imagery and stuff within the film that kind of make your head shake a little bit if you do so definitely give it give it the opportunity when you have the time